Why are you this way? Why are you doing this to me? Hello my fellows, Happy New Year everyone. I hope you guys had a good holiday break. I took a little bit of time off at the end of the year just to enjoy myself and relax a little bit as it has been a pretty hectic year. So I'm really excited to be back into the swing of things and I thought I would kick off the new year with a video on my best and worst plans of 2021. If you are familiar with my content from before, you'll know I did a very similar video last year and I thought I'd keep this up because it's a really good way to look back on the previous year and see what were my sort of favorites and my least favorites of the year. So if you're interested to see the plants that made the top five list and the bottom five list, then definitely keep on watching. But before we get started, if you're new around here, my name is Grace and I post plant videos every week. So if you're interested in planting content like this, feel free to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you get notified when a new video is out. As I did in last year's video, I'm going to be ranking my plants on a criteria and I'm going to use the same criteria I did as the year before. First criteria is how fast growing they were in 2021. For example, how many leaves they've put out or how tall it's gotten now or how bushy, just generally how far it's come. Second criteria is how easy care they were, whether or not they were fussy about temperatures or humidity or if I've missed a watering or two or how they fared with pests. Criteria number three, and that would exclude a lot of the newer plants to my collection, is that I must have owned them for a year before I include them in my top and bottom list. And finally, the fourth criteria is a little bit of a catch-all. It's a little bit more subjective, just for the je ne sais quoi that you can't really quantify. So I've just named this category as whether or not they spark joy or more accurately how much joy they sparked for me in the year of 2021. So I hope that criteria makes sense and let's get into it. So let's start off with the best of 2021 and in fifth place is this beautiful Marble Queen Pothos that has also been featured in my video from last year. So it is two for two and that's how you know that this is such a solid plant. I have been um, winding it back against itself to create a bushier look. As you can see, there are some parts of it that just keeps falling off, but I kind of just uh, loop the leaves against each other to secure them. And this is a really heavy pot. It's actually come quite a long way from last year. There was a little bit of a thrips outbreak um, a while back. This is one of the plants that was in the grow tent when that happened, but as compared to other plants that was attacked, I think this fared pretty well. There's just very minimal damage to the leaves from thrips. Usually what you'll see there is that there are puncture holes at the back of the leaves, but this one here doesn't really have too much damage as compared to say my neon philodendron that one took a little bit of a hit anyway back to this plant here this is a super solid plant it is fast growing in my opinion it has been really easy care although this is not a rare plant by any means it is a must-have in my collection and if anything were to happen to it or if i had to restart my collection from scratch this would definitely be one of the first plants i would repurchase in fourth place, we've got my Raphidophora tetrasperma. That is the non-tissue culture variety. If you guys are interested in a video about the differences between the tissue culture variety and the non-tissue culture version, definitely let me know in the comments down below because I do have the tissue culture version as well and I can make a video comparing the two. This is my non-tissue culture Raphidophora tetrasperma that I got um, I think in September of 2020 and when I first got it, it was pretty much just a couple of leaves down here But as you can see it has grown all the way up to here and um, I'm gonna have trouble trying to keep this in frame So please do excuse my awkward poses as I talk about this plant I was debating whether or not to include this plant in the top five list because I don't really talk about it as much as I do my other plants and the reason why I kind of don't pull this out very often is because it's put out all these aerial roots and in fact one of the aerial roots rooted itself to a different pot or several different pots so I had quite a difficult time pulling it out to show you guys so that's one of the main reasons why I haven't really been talking about this plant as much as I would like but um, I did cut off some of the aerial roots to pull it out and show you guys in this video so I hope you enjoy her in all her glory uh, in terms of the criteria, this is definitely a 
fast growing plant as i said before i'll insert a photo of what it looked like when i first got it and fast forward today it's just grown exponentially and it's been really easy care as well i did mention there was a thrips outbreak but this one here was not attacked at all so i'm not sure if it's because maybe they didn't really enjoy the taste of this plant because um, there isn't much damage on here at all whatsoever definitely a fast growing plant an easy care plant and one that sparks a lot of joy for me all right next up and in third place is my hoya linearis and i'm sorry if this video is basically a repeat of my <laughs> previous videos because I do talk about this plant a lot but of course if I have done so I have to include it in this video because it's one that I've just thoroughly enjoyed in the year of 2021. So as I've mentioned before this is definitely a really fast growing plant and it's really easy care for me. I haven't had any issues with it um, dying of root rot or you know, failing at propagations or anything like that. And it's definitely one that sparked a lot of joy for me because you guys would have heard me go on and on about this plant in a lot of my videos. And in second place, I've thought about this quite a bit and I'm going to cheat a little bit here and include both my Florida Ghost and Florida Beauty. This is one that you would have seen me unbox in one of my haul videos. And I also talked about it recently in one of my recent videos, but it has actually bushed out quite a bit since then. I remember talking about like the new growth in this section of the plant in the previous video and as you can see it has actually sprouted so many new leaves and um, it's looking a little bit hectic on this plant at the moment with all the new growth and also it's put out three of these beautiful lobed leaves which are characteristic of philodendron floridas if you know me you'll know i absolutely love the shape of these leaves i think it's so unique this is one of the newest leaves that it put out and you can see that it's still a little bit light in color it's actually still quite soft so it hasn't fully hardened off yet but um, it does eventually turn into a darker shade of green and then it turns fully green so i really enjoy watching this transition and it took a little while for it to get going but i think it has hit its stride now and it's growing pretty quickly now so I am confident in saying that once it hits a certain level of maturity, this is actually a pretty fast growing plant. And in terms of easy care, I haven't had any issues with this one whatsoever. I've kind of just been waiting for it to acclimatize to my space and I'm happy to say that it looks like it has. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to watching this grow in 2022. And here is my beautiful Philodendron Florida Beauty. I did get this in a plant swap with one of my dear friends on Instagram, Elaine at The Leaf Diaries. And um, it has come such a long way. When I first received this plant, I think it only had two leaves this green one here and this beautiful variegated leaf here and it has put out so many new leaves now in my care and every new leaf is such a surprise because you never know what you're going to get in terms of the shape and also the variegation so it's definitely one that sparked a lot of joy for me in 2021 and also i'm happy to report that this is a very solid plant and a pretty easy going plant as well i haven't lost a single leaf on this plant all the leaves are still intact it's also transitioned into semi-hydro very nicely i initially was growing this in soil but decided to uh, transfer it into map grow absolutely loving it and ever since then it has grown exponentially and very very quickly one last thing about this plant that i've noticed is that new growth comes out this sort of more neon or like chartreuse color in the variegation and then it eventually fades into a more like creamy sort of variegation like this which i absolutely adore so i'm really enjoying the transition and watching it slowly fade into a creamier color as well definitely had to include this one on my list and i'm happy to put it in second place and in the number one spot can you guys take a guess it is none other than my variegated Hartley philodendron. I mean, you guys know I had to include this as number one in my list because I bang on about this plant in every other video. Definitely a fast growing plant. I've gone on and on about it. It is super easy care for me and sparks a whole lot of joy for me in the year of 2021. I think the last time I showed this plant to you guys in one of my recent videos, it was up to here. But ever since then, it has pushed out a couple more new leaves as you can see so definitely a fast growing plant i mean 
I don't think that we can deny that and um, absolutely love the variegation pattern on each and every single one of these leaves. Very solid all-rounder and number one on my best list for 2021. If you're enjoying this video so far guys, please do me a big favor and hit that like button. It really helps out my channel and lets me know that I'm doing a good job. All right guys, so now let's move on to the worst plants of 2021 and they were actually a little bit more challenging for me to pick. I also wanted to quickly say that the five plants that I talked about last year have actually bounced back in 2021 and they're looking a lot better and doing a lot better. So some of them have graduated out of that category um, and then some other plants have found their way in the bottom to replace them. Now the ranking for this is a little bit loose because they're pretty much neck and neck and um, they made their way to the bottom five for different reasons. It's not really comparable. So do with this information what you will. This is all just a bit of fun anyway. So yeah, let's get on to the bottom five of 2021. So in fifth place of the worst plants of 2021 is the Tradescantia. Now I have the Tradescantia Nanook here to show you guys, but I'm really including the entire category of Tradescantias. I need a little bit more water than um, what I'm used to. I tend to underwater my plants, so that's why I gravitate towards Hoyas and um, Aeroids and things like that that can actually do with a little less water. But with these guys, they always crisp up on me. And I know I showed my Tridescantia uh, tricolor in one of my previous videos. It might have been my houseplant regrets video. And I said that I will try to salvage it and propagate it, but I actually didn't get around to it. And it's pretty much gone now. It's like all browned and crisped up. And I'm just going to throw them out. I think at this stage of my houseplant journey, I kind of know my style and... Um, there are a lot of things going on for us in 2022 as well. I just don't have that much time and energy for high maintenance plants anymore. And so I'm happy to let that go and admire it from afar. But back to this plant here, the reason why I am also including this in my um, bottom five list is because no matter what I do, I find that some of the leaves um, tend to do this, where it's like brown and crisping and it, like, I'm not sure why I'm not getting the leaves wet. I'm making sure that it's not burnt from too much light, but still I find that it tends to happen anyway. And if any of you guys have any tips for me as to how to avoid that, definitely leave them in the comments down below. It is much appreciated. But like I said, this one here, I think it is super beautiful. I love the sort of color on it. And um, the backs are these beautiful, like bright purple color as well and I just overall really like the vibe of this plant but it just drives me crazy that there are some browning crispy tips on it I just I, th I feel like it just ruins the vibe of this plant and I have actually propagated this just to see if it may be the mother plant issue and I've got the propagation here to show you guys and it's essentially the same thing you can see some like browning and crisping on the leaves. It doesn't really matter if it doesn't bother you, but I'm someone who tends to get bothered looking at this. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, I do like the look of this as a bushy plant, so I might actually replant this back in here to make it a, a lush pot. But yeah, I'm not giving up on this. I'm still going to try and overlook the browning crisping tips, but it is pretty annoying. So that's the reason why it has found its way to the bottom of the list. All right, in fourth place is this Hoya um, Latifolia Elbow Marginata. And for a little while, I was actually really happy with this plant and it sparked a lot of joy because I did get this as two separate cuttings and it eventually put out like this vine, these beautiful leaves. It seemed to be growing pretty well and pretty quickly initially and then it just completely stalled. It's been stagnant like this for months and months. And another thing as well, it did put out a peduncle as you can see here, which I was super excited about because I would have liked to see what the blooms on this Hoya look like. But for whatever reason, the um, blooms blasted off, which was really heartbreaking because it was so close to actually blooming. So yeah, if we think back about my criteria about it being fast growing, it's definitely not this year. It was an easy care. I actually found it to be quite 
confusing because I thought I had the care down but it wasn't doing anything for so long so I'm not really sure anymore and um, yeah it didn't really spark that much joy for me because it was making me really anxious about whether or not I was doing something wrong I mean I do see a new little leaf right here as you might be able to see if the camera will focus right here however it has been months since it put out a new leaf and then finally the blooms as well it blasting off really just broke the camel's back for me and that's why I'm kind of a little bit annoyed with this plant and so in fourth place off the bottom of the list it goes Third on the worst list is this Philodendron Sodoroi. Now, if you watched my previous video from last year, um, the Philodendron Varicosum was the one that I struggled with the most. However, that has actually been doing pretty well in 2021, so it's graduated out of the worst list, and instead, this guy is replacing him. And the reason why is because I find that even though I have put it on a moss pole, thinking that it would grow a lot quicker and also start putting out larger leaves it hasn't been the case it took forever for it to start putting out these growth up here and also they are really strange looking they're kind of wonky and also very very small in comparison to the older leaves so i'm not quite sure what is going on there it might be the fact that i let the moss pole dry out for a little bit longer than they like. Um, it could also be that it's not getting enough sunlight. I'm not really sure. I'm just still kind of like trying to crack the code on this plant. One thing that I noticed about the Philodendron Sodoroi, or my one at least, is that it's quite prone to sun bleaching. So if it gets exposed to a lot of sunlight, this is what tends to happen. I'm not sure if that's coming off on camera, but there are some spots in here that you can see are a little bit yellowy and um, kind of spotty, like it's been bleached. So I'm still trying to find a balance between getting it just enough light to grow nicely, but not too much light that it gets sun bleached. So in terms of my criteria as to whether it's fast growing, not particularly the case in 2021. Has it been easy care? No, I do find it a little bit fussy for all the reasons I said before. And it has definitely not sparked joy for me because every time I look at this plant, I'm just like, why are you this way? Why are you doing this to me? But I will be looking to rehab this plant in 2022 and hopefully it will do better things this coming year. The second worst plant of 2021 is an anthurium and it is the anthurium augustus. It actually was quite established and it looked pretty good but um it did recently suffer from root rot. A lot of the leaves have since fallen off and this one is on its way out as well so we're going to be left with just one leaf which is this one here it's a lot smaller in size as compared to the previous leaves that have gone in last year's video i had included another anthurium that was suffering from severe root rot and i think i showed you guys as well that pretty much all the roots were gone it was non-existent but i have rehabbed that now and it's looking pretty good so i'm hoping that this plant will bounce back as well just like the other one we will see fingers crossed but yeah, for the moment and for the whole year of 2021, I've been waiting for this to bush out, to acclimatize and all of that, and it hasn't really. So it's definitely not fast growing for me. It hasn't been easy care at all. And yeah, it hasn't sparked that much joy for me because of those reasons. All right, guys. So the moment you've all been waiting for, which is the worst plant of 2021 and I don't think that you guys will be able to guess this one because it is a very recent event that this plant has started going on the decline again. I'm actually not sure if it's going to make it. So this is my very first Hoya Serpens. I actually purchased a huge lush pot of it initially, but what's happened is that it suffered root rot and so I tried to salvage what was left of it put it in semi-hydro, it did great for a little while and then very recently it started going downhill again and that's because it again suffered from root rot. So this is one Hoya that I find to be pretty finicky. I'm not sure what the difference is between the roots of the Hoya serpents compared to the other Hoyas but I find that this is one that I really tend to struggle with. A lot so I'm not sure if you can tell um, I'll try and step out of the frame so the camera will focus on the plant but you can see that it looks pretty dehydrated like the leaves are very thin and you can see it start to pucker up and wrinkle which is a 
telltale sign that um, this Hoya is thirsty and I did recently pull it out of the pot to check on the roots and sure enough look at that this is definitely suffering from root rot at the moment so I need to figure out a way to rehab this before I lose this plant completely definitely not a fast growing plant definitely not an easy care plant and one that causes me quite a lot of stress <laughs> so it's found its way to the number one place in my worst plants of 2021 for this reason and again if any of you guys have any tips for me at all I'd really appreciate it because I would really hate to lose this Hoya. So that was my best and worst plants of 2021. What did you guys think? I hope you enjoyed and if you want to see my video from last year I've left it on the screen for you guys so feel free to check it out. Thank you so much for watching and until next time stay mellow my fellows.